Hello everyone, my name is Mark Leon, and today I'm going to talk about how we can improve on human community stewardship, my conflict of interest. The presentation will cover three parts, diagnosis, strategy, and education. And I will give you seven practical tips to improve your practice in your daily practice. First, improve diagnosis. And I'd like to talk about source identification. This point is very important in my opinion. If you don't identify the source of infection, you cannot treat adequately your patient. And if you look back at your file, you should find a source identification in, most, in more than 80% of patients. As soon as you have your source of the source identification, you will know the type of bacteria you have to target. Always keep in mind that VAP, ventilator associated pneumonia, are diagnosed by excess in 40% of cases, and that we have to prioritize early source control. So identify the source is a key of treatment and the key of good antimicrobial stewardship. My second tip is pressurize your microbiological lab. Pressurize them to have very quickly a response for your gram. And if your gram is negative, probably there is no infection. And especially in ventilator-associated pneumonia, that has been shown that in case of negative gram, there is no pneumonia. You should pressurize them to have very quickly the result of your culture. And you all know that simply the fact to collect blood for culture is associated for, with improved survival just because it is a good practice. If you are lucky, you can have rapid diagnostic tests using most of the time a rapid PCR. Uh, the level of evidence to use this kind of, of device is pretty weak today, but sure we will have uh, full development in next years. This test makes it possible to have the resistant genes very quickly and to adapt the best choice of antibiotics in very short time, one to six hours. So you can have ESBL, and we show in a, in a, in a previous paper that uh, in few minutes, in, in, in 60 minutes, we can have the result for MRSA, and then we save a lot of patients to be treated with vancomycin, or linezolid, so we, we save cost and we save side effects. Second, improve strategy. I have four types for strategy and the tip three is to use a systematic checklist to have the best choice for the spectrum of your treatment. And as you know, the spectrum of your treatment, the initial spectrum of your treatment, the empirical one, is associated with improved survival. If you miss that, your patient can die. So use a systematic checklist, including the hospitalization duration, the previous hospitalization in the 90 day, the previous use of antibiotic in the 90 day local ecology, you are the best to know that, the immune response of your patients, the source of sepsis, it is a lung, it is the abdomen, and when you have this checklist, you can do the best choice of treatment. My tip four is a daily to start antibiotics. You all know and that's a strong recommendation of the surviving sepsis campaign, that we have to provide one hour antibiotic in patients with septic shock, those with increased lactate levels, those with requiring uh, vasopressors. And we can apply that to those with high certainty 
if you are sure that there is an infection and that there is an organ failure like IRDS, staff antibiotic, don't wait. You, you have to collect your, your, your samples, blood, uh, sputum, something else, and start antibiotic without delay if there is septic shock and if you have a high certainty of infection. And in those patients, that's a life saver procedure. But there is so many patients in which it's not the case. They have, there is no septic shock. You are not sure of infection. There is a lung collapse, perhaps there is fever, but there is no need for vasopressor. And in those patients, you have time. You have time to reassess. You have time to, to, to have a second uh, consultations. You can, you can make uh, uh, an additional uh, examination and you can reassess in, in four hours, in six hours. And there is no clue uh, showing that in this patient, this is very deleterious and there is a very nice meta-analysis recently published in clinical microbiology infection showing that it is a safe procedure in those patients to, to take some time to, to have the best diagnosis. My type five is very classical. Is at day one or day two or day three, refine your choice and it is very important. You can start antibiotics if, if you don't know because it can be a lifesaver for your patient, but you can be wrong and, and I'm wrong, you're wrong, everybody can be wrong, and we have to reassess at day three, day two, as soon as we have the, the results from the lab. And at this time, we have to choose the type of drug, the best drugs, uh, usually that with the narrower spectrum, and you have to use the escalation in this case. And this is not very well done since in the DANA study uh, led by the group of uh, Yann Develle, which shows that only 16% of, of uh, antibiotics were de-escalated. So they, they, there is room for improvement. And the key point is identification of bacteria for this. And now, and this is very important, we have to, to provide the best dose for your patient, and we have to use therapeutic drug monitoring in all patients uh, each time we can, and, and to adapt the dose to the MIC of the bacteria. So we, can, we have to give the right dose to the right patient for the good bacteria. And it is the best practice you can have. If you don't have a therapeutic drug monitoring, you can have a substitute, which is a creatinine clearance. And if the creatinine clearance is high, you have to increase the dose of antibiotic. And if it is low, you have to decrease the dose of antibiotic. That's my tip five. My tip six is very important. You can save many, many days of antibiotics each time you prefer short duration. And seven days for most infection is a good cutoff for, for blood infection, probably for, for VAP, and that's been shown by, in an old study by Schatz and collaborators, and that has been shown by Montravers and collaborators for uh, intra-abdominal infection. So eight days or seven days of treatment reduce the uh, exposure to antibiotics and reduce by, by thus the, the development of multidrug resistant bacteria. If you are not sure, use PCT. PCT is, very, is pretty good to, to, to guide you to stop antibiotic earlier than, than, than seven days sometimes. And if you need more than seven days, of antibiotics for a given patient, in my opinion, you have to, to, to consult an infectious disease expert uh, to have his expertise and to share this decision. That's my tip six. Third, improve education. Education is very important in terms of uh, antimicrobial stewardship. My Tip seven is be supervised in our daily practice. 
in this uh, cluster randomized clinical trial, uh, looking at the impact of guidelines on the outcome of patient and practice in France after the diffusion of guidelines on VAP, uh, we show that a single intervention which consisted on a feedback given by a local coordinator on the, 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 the poor result of a given team uh, was not efficient to improve the outcome. And as you can see here, there is no difference between the control and the intervention group during the phase three. So a single intervention is not efficient. In contrast, uh, we perform a survey uh, in uh, 111 uh, experts in France. And as you can see on the left of the screen, there is no good uh, adherence to recommendation protocol are present only in 60% of cases and, and, and reassessment is done in half of cases. Uh, therapeutic drug monitoring in half of cases too, and the results are, are pretty long to be to be available. So there is room for improvement. We can improve the practice, and the best performers in this uh, survey were the the, the physicians working in non university non university hospitals, probably because it is more hospital and the communication is is good in those hospitals as in contrast to, to university hospitals, which are very large and in which communication can be difficult. The best team were those with a local champion because the guy can be here every day and provide uh, advice at the bedside every day. And the best team were those with the best communication with the antimicrobial uh, stewardship team. And those more and more were the best. So my take home message to end this two-day presentation. First, diagnosis. I know the source of infection and the bacteria. If I don't have these, I cannot manage my patient adequately. Two, strategy. I know my patient. I know is or her medical file. I refine my diagnosis at day two, and I use the best dose for my patient for the shorter time possible. And third, education. In, if difficult, in each difficult cases, I know my local champion and I can contact her or him very easily. I thank you for your attention.